It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com So it's Sassy on the Road. I am right now at Temptations Cafe, which is at 80 and a half Main Street in Nyack. Nyack, yay! And they have lunch and dinner, and they have breakfast, and they have a kids' menu. You can find them on Facebook, and you can find them on Instagram. So there you go. Thumbs up, here we are, the Sassy Show, but on a Wednesday. Yes, on the road. So I'm back again, Temptations Cafe. Yay. Yay. This is, it's a really great place and you really should um, come on down to Nyack. So there we go, I'm taking home that menu. Okay, so here we are. All right, I wrote my list like I usually do because I know I'm gonna forget something. So, hmm, where do I begin? Where do I start? So okay, I'll start with the coronavirus because it's just making me it's just making me crazy all right first of all I just did a video to show you how I used to teach preschoolers how to wash their hands that's posted on TikTok and the shorter version because you only can post 59 seconds and then I posted the shorter version on Twitter and then on Instagram TV later on probably tomorrow tomorrow on tomorrow I will post the longer version of how to wash your hands. Learn to wash your hands like a preschooler. Now, here's my question. Because I went to Stop and Shop today to look at things and I went to Target and everybody was out of hand sanitizer, store bought, store brand, and you know, name brand. Dial soap is very low. Lysol wipes, Clorox wipes, Lysol spray, all gone. You people are going insane over nothing. Seriously. First of all, do you not notice that the media is only talking about strain number 19? It's C-O-R, core V-I-N, or V-I-R, or whatever, core virus 19. It's the strand number 19, which means there are 18 other strands that have been around for a very long time, and no one said boo. The flu is more dangerous right now than this and everybody's freaking out. And then one of my friends just posted on Facebook that he was at Costco and everybody was grabbing bottled water. Please, people, calm the F down. Can you calm down? All right, just calm down. You're going crazy over something. It's just, it's why it's mind boggling to me. First of all, I like to know this. Before this virus happened and all these people are now getting Purell and they're getting hand sanitizers and they're getting soap and stuff, what were you doing beforehand? Were you not washing your hands? Were you not scrubbing down tables and devices and all this kind of stuff? Where all the bacteria was beforehand? I mean, it's crazy to think that before the media went berserk on coronavirus, that nobody was worried about washing their hands then. The flu was going around, no one cared about that. But all of a sudden, everybody has to get Purell. Everybody has to wash their hands. Everybody's washing their hands and getting Clorox wipes galore and, po and using it all over the place. Where were you before? The flu is, kills more people. Colds, you got bacterial infections, you got other types of viruses, I mean, the measles. There's so many other things that were going around. Where the hell were you? I can tell you on social media, everybody's going psycho. Psycho. Twitter, psycho. Everybody's losing it because of this coronavirus. I even have cheerleaders that won't, they can't go to a game. Their parents won't let them go because of the coronavirus. I'm not kidding. But yet, they let them go to school. Just think about how much germs are in schools. A lot. So that's the first thing on my list. Off. This next thing is... There is a social media challenge. I forgot the name of it. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it. But it's where kids jump on the sides and then they tell the guys, oh, in the middle, oh, you're gonna jump like this. And they jump and then they make the guy in the middle think that they're gonna jump together and they don't and they knock him off his feet. Um, yeah, because kids are stupid. So what's happening is these kids in the middle are getting seriously hurt. They can break their back. They're breaking their back, they're breaking, they get concussions, some of them have brain damage. I mean, seriously, lawsuits galore. So if you have kids, tell them not to do this. Don't do this. 
it's dangerous. It's not a really good challenge to kind of do. Um, okay, next thing. As I posted it yesterday on my Facebook page, so I'm gonna talk about it again. I can't stand rude, know-it-all type people. Can't, I can't. If I go out of my way to email you something, respond back. Can you have the respect to respond back? I don't care if you want to become a client of mine. I don't care if not only you don't want to become a client of mine, that you don't want to take my advice. That's up to you. Hey, everybody has prerogatives. But have the respect enough to email me back. I don't care if you say, uh, you know, right now I'm not interested, or thanks for the information, blah, blah, blah. Like, those types of people, I can't stand. I, can't, I deal with them all day long. That and the know-it-all people. People who think they know social media all the time. They know it. They know it. No, um, obviously don't. I don't go around telling, like, you know, dentists how to fill my cavity. I don't go around telling roofers how to build a roof. I don't go around telling landscapers how to landscape. I don't go telling even people who create websites how to create their websites. Why? Because I don't know that stuff. So when people start telling me how to do my job, that's it. I can't. I can't. I can't even. Like, there are some things that I'm good at and there are some things that you're good at. So, you know, if we all work together, we would all learn a lot more in life. But we don't learn a lot more in life because nobody wants to learn anything. Everybody thinks they're a freaking ass know-it-all. Oh, we're not know-it-alls. We're not perfect. So if I tell you a certain way is going to work for your social media, I know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm an expert. Duh. Because I know it. And then I have to have people and try to insult me by telling me, oh, I contacted a social media expert. Really? Who? Who did you contact that's a social media expert? You were working with one. Hello? That I have to deal with. And then I have to deal with people who think that I'm so stupid. I know I have blonde hair. It makes me, people automatically think I'm dumb. But I had to have somebody tell me recently that, oh, I've been trying to contact you for weeks. We're not interested in keeping the service any anymore. I couldn't, I haven't contacted you. Hello, I contacted you two freaking weeks ago with an email and you emailed me back. If you can't get on the phone, there's email. There's taxing. There's Facebook. There's Instagram direct message. There's Twitter direct message. There's tons of ways to contact people today. Don't ever tell somebody, oh, I, I've been trying to contact you for weeks, so I guess I'm just gonna have to leave this voicemail. How, like, do I look that stupid? No, I'm not. That, that was like, that was last week. See, this is the kind of stuff I have to deal with. And then I have to deal with people who don't pay me on time either. That's another thing. Like, all you people out there trying to become entrepreneurs, this is one of the, the hills that you're going to have to deal with. One of the, the battles you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to deal with people not wanting to pay you on time. And then telling you it's your fault because you didn't remind them. Because you have to remind people constantly how to do things. Like, you know, we all have phones. Where's mine? Let's find my phone. It's off, but see, we all have these things, and inside this is a calendar. Oh my God, do you know that you can use the calendar, and every time that you have to pay somebody or you have to do something, you can put it in here. Calendar, first of the month, pay Stephanie. Pay, and, and just put it as, a, as every single month, and then you'll remember yourself. I'm no one's mother. Why do I have to mother everybody and remind people they have to do things? This is, this is my life. This is, this is like behind the scenes footage, but during the sassy show. I shouldn't have to remind you, you owe me money. 10 times, 10, like three, if I have to remind you the third time, my Lord have mercy. Can you just imagine how your house looks? That I have to remind people to send me then footage. I have to remind people to send me stuff. Then people who don't send me content, I have to have them tell me that the content they don't like. Well, no. Then I have to tell people, con I have to deal with people on a daily basis who then cancel meetings. Cancel things, last minute. So now I've changed my policies, all because of this. So now I'm gonna have a cancel um, thing because I'm done, I'm done dealing with people. This is, this is, so if you're becoming an entrepreneur, this is one of the battles you're gonna have to deal with. You're gonna have to deal with people who don't wanna pay you 
on time. And then blame you that they didn't pay you. <laughs> it's not my fault you didn't pay me. You know, I, I sent out your thing January 1st. On the thing, it tells you the invoice. Here's the amount that's due in the year. Each month, it's this month. It's this amount. And it's on this day. Why is that so hard? And I will tell you this. Whether or not I use the content that I create for you, number one, I own it. Number two, you still have to pay me. It doesn't matter if it's not posted. I still spent my time dedicating to figuring out your content, right? And most of the time what I'm trying to do is figure out what I'm writing. The writing part is the hardest part of posting for all those that need to know. It's not the pictures or the videos or that kind of stuff. That stuff's easy. That, that actually is easy. It's trying to figure out what I'm writing to post for you that's going to click. And then looking up hashtags. And then looking up the times I should post. And then keeping up to date with all those different things. When the audience is on, who the audience is, when I should post. It's a whole big slew of different things I have to do. I deserve to be paid for that. Sorry, but not sorry. All right. That was my list. Now we're done. Now we can go talk about athletes. My favorite, my favorite thing to talk about. Athletes and social media. All right. So Instagram has been known to be an influencer market, right? It's been that way for a long time. We talked about last time that they're trying to get the checkout now for all these different brands so people can purchase things from Instagram. Well, now, so I will tell you, it's not, the value on Instagram is not as much anymore as it is on Twitter. For example, now Sam Darnold on the Jets. He's only on Instagram. Now, if Sam Darnold was also on Twitter, he'd be making a lot more money. See, so the, the influencer market on Instagram is dropping significantly for money. It's now gaining strength for influencing and influencer market marketing on Twitter. So here's the here's example. Okay. So here's an example. Okay. Um, just trying to see. Connections. Well. Okay. Um, he has 207,000 followers. This is Sam Darnold. I'm just giving him an example. His average likes are 21,000. His engagement rate. Now this is where the this is where all the money comes into play now. It's not the followers. It's the engagement rate. His engagement rate is 10 percent, 10.30 percent. His estimated earnings per post on Instagram, according to this thing that I've done, is $624 to $1,041. His audience interests are music, fitness and yoga, and entertainment. Now, there are a lot of, now, comparing him to Patrick Mahomes, for example. Patrick Mahomes has 3 million followers. His average likes are 563,801. The engagement rate is better than Sam Darnold's. It's at 17.10%. His earnings on Instagram are between 6,500 6, and 10 grand, almost 11,000 $11, dollars per post, per post. Entertainment, music, and fitness and yoga are his top um, categories that his audience is interested in. So then we'll just show another one. I did Baker, May Baker Mayfield, for example. So he has 2 million followers. So notice he has 2 million followers, Patrick Holmes has 3, and Sam Donald only has 207,000. Sam, honey, you gotta fix that number. You're in a big market called New York. You should have 1 million followers at least. But you're not on it all the time, and you don't post all the time, and you do more Instagram stories than you should be doing, and that's why your number is low. Your number would be higher if you did more stuff, more posting. So anyway. So Baker Mayfield, average like 76,000. Engagement rate is very low, 4.49. He could only make, even though he has two million followers, see his engagement rate is so low that he could only make 3,400 to 5,700 per post compared to, see, um, Patrick Mahomes who has one million more followers than him, but his engagement rate is 17%, it's higher. So that's where all the money's coming from now people are looking at your engagement rate, not the number of followers. Now, it used to be that he had 2 million followers, like Baker Mayfield had 2 million followers, you would make a killing on that. But now, because of all the fake bots and all this different stuff that's happening on Instagram, you can't make that much money. So, I just did 
So it did a couple hockey players, for example. So Ovenshkin, he's got 2 million followers. His average likes are 91,000. His engagement rate is low. It's 5.9%. So his estimated earnings are 3000 to five to 5100 Not bad for a hockey player, though. And his interests, his audience interests are travel, beauty and fashion, and photography. See? A little different. Now, two of my favorites on the Rangers, actually three, for Instagram. Tony D'Angelo. All right. His followers are 23000 His average likes is 4600 His engagement rate is 20%. So he can make... The minimum 2700 the maximum 4300 per post. That's not so bad. Um, and the, uh, the audience interests are restaurants and food, beauty and fashion, and fitness and yoga. Another one of my favorite hockey players is Brendan Lemieux. All right. Followers, 39,000. Average likes, 5,600. Engagement rate, 14.55%. So he can, the minimum he can earn is 2700 the max he can earn is five grand, And that's per post, see? So it's going now by engagement rate. If you're going to be an influencer, it doesn't matter how many followers you have anymore. It's your engagement rate. Your engagement rate is so crucial now for this kind of stuff. All right. So the other big hockey player in New York is Panarin. Named after, people are calling him the bread man because he's, his last name sounds like Panera. All right. So he has 544,000 followers, 54,000 average likes. His engagement rate is 10%, not so bad. He can make between $1,600 and $2,700 per post on Instagram if he is an influencer. Travel and tourism is one thing. Photography, restaurant, food, and grocery are the top um, interests for his audience. Now. Here's where I wanted to show you the difference. This is why it's so important with engagement. Because Mike Trout is a baseball player. He's got 2 million followers. His average likes are 107,000. But his engagement rate is low. It's only 6. Okay? It's only 6%. So he, although he is a big shot name in baseball, he can only make 3,500 to 59,000 per post. Now, this is according to my study and my calculator that I use specifically for this. I could be wrong, I could be off. You can still probably possibly make more money on Instagram than I'm saying, but this is according to the engagement rate. All right, like, you know, so Aaron Judge, one million followers, but his engagement rate is only 10% because he's early on, this is baseball's problem. See, the players don't know how to use social media. They don't, they're not on it as often as all the other players. So, I mean, he can only make up to three, almost $4,000 per post. He probably can make a lot more. But that's just according to the statistics. See, all of this is statistics stuff. It's not, doesn't mean that he can't make more money than I'm saying. It just means statistic-wise, engagement on social media is important. Jamal Adams, another, another jet that's big. So, 708,000 followers. His engagement rate, though, is only 4.82%. Why? Because I think people are done seeing the stuff he posts on Instagram. It's all the same stuff. He bores people to death. Estimated earnings per post, 2100 to 3500 He can probably make a lot more than that, though. Music, entertainment, fitness, and yoga. Different. Now, here is the difference. Like I've been saying. All right. Here is the difference. Twitter. Jamal Adams. So he has more followers. Does he have? Let me just look. So he has, Jamal, where are you? 708,000 followers on Instagram. On Twitter, he has 682,000 followers, right? But his value on Twitter is $314,000. Money on Twitter. So his Twitter is worth a lot more than his Instagram. Why? Because... It's shifting. Everything shifts on social media. That's what people don't understand. It doesn't stay the same. Instagram, influencing on Instagram is pretty much dying out now, and it's moving now to Twitter. Twitter is the big guy. Here's another thing. See, here's the example. Mike Trout. Like I just told you about how bad he is on Instagram. On Twitter, he has 2,500,000 million, tw followers, right? His value on Twitter is $1 million. $1 million. 
I mean, he can literally get a lot of money per post on Twitter if he did if he did influencing ambassadorship marketing, you know, sponsorships on Twitter. Then he can get his lousy what five grand on Instagram. Uh, okay, and then the big guy in, and then the big guy, LeBron James. Okay, he's got 45 million followers on Twitter. That's a lot of followers. His complete Twitter now this is the whole. His complete Twitter value is 20 million dollars. Now he can't get. He's not going to get 20 million dollars per post, but he can ask for a million dollars per post. He can even ask for two if he wanted, and people would give it to him. And so then I'll just do one of my favorite hockey players. Tony D'Angelo is on Twitter. He's got 18,000 followers. His value on Twitter is close to six grand. So, I mean, basically he can get six grand per tweet if he wanted to. He can probably get even half of that. He can get 3000 or $3,500 per, um, per, per um, tweet. So, like I said, so it's all changing. The... the Everything eventually evolves. So people aren't really focusing anymore on Instagram as much as they are focusing now on Twitter for influencing marketing. So everything shifts. So now the shift is going to Twitter. I don't know where it's going to go after that, to tell you. I don't know. It's probably going to go to TikTok. That's my guess. Because right now, TikTok is still hot. Um, now, the thing about TikTok that I just noticed is there is a hashtag that people have been using called FYP, for your page. That's what it means. And they're also using the hashtag for your page. So people have been testing it out, seeing if it actually works or if it actually ban, um, if it actually keeps you from getting views and people liking your stuff. So in the last few, um, the last few um, posts that I've done on videos that I've posted, um, uh, uh, let's see, um, let's see what I've gotten. So I've gotten how many views? I've gotten 127 views in one, I've gotten 142 views in another, and I've gotten 141 views in this one. So let's see, the, la the latest one I have 11 likes, nobody's commented, and that's without me using the hashtag FYP. So I'm still testing it out to see if it's working. But now here's one. Here's one where I used, did I use it? Yes, I used it, right? I only got, how many views did I get? 27. So, and another one, I got 96. Oh, here's one, I got 40. So I have for your page, and one, two, three other ones, I got 40 views, 18 views, and 26 views. And, oh, another one, 69 views. So a lot of hashtags are not being allowed anymore on TikTok. So you don't really want to use FYP anymore if you're on TikTok anymore. You just want to get you just don't need to use it anymore. So you, what you should be doing is figuring out what the popular hashtags are and then using those for those to trend. And that goes for Facebook too. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the ones where you use hashtags. LinkedIn, we use hashtags on LinkedIn. Uh-huh. People are shocked when I say that, but yes, there are hashtags on LinkedIn. So, for example, if, I'm just trying to think, um, I always use coffee as an example. So let's say you have a coffee shop. One of the big hashtags that you should be using is coffee. So, and that's, on, that's also on LinkedIn. So all big hashtags that are on Facebook and are on Instagram and are on TikTok and Twitter, they're on, they're on LinkedIn as well. And hashtags are important because it help, it's like a little directory. It helps us find people faster and it helps find what we're looking for faster. That's why you people use it. But don't don't overuse hashtags. So on Twitter, I use maybe f between five and seven tops. Facebook, I try to only use three. Between three and five, depending on what I'm talking about um, as, the, as the thing. And same as Instagram. Any more than 10 hashtags, and you're really not helping yourself. You're hurting yourself. Um, you don't want to use that many hashtags, as I have found out. Um, a lot of a lot of times the hashtags are supposed to help you but what a lot of people also tend to do is they tend to cut and paste and use the same hashtags that's what's called that's what that's what's called shadow banning you're going to get shadow banned when Instagram finds their in their um, artificial intelligence is really really good on Instagram 
and they find out that you're using the same hashtags all the time, guess what happens? You lose viewership. You lose people clicking on your pictures. You lose people, you know, liking stuff and seeing stuff because they're purposely pushing you down from getting views. So you want to watch what kind of hashtags you use. Hashtags are important, but they're not as important and vital anymore to getting views. What's, what's vital getting views? Your engagement. You're engaging content. Content is the most important thing. Now, it doesn't have to be video. Like, everybody asks me, I said, no, you don't have to use video all the time. Video is important. I'm not saying it's not important. Um, but what we have to remember is we have to have engaging content. If you don't have engaging content, no one's going to care what you're posting. Um, and that goes for athletes. So, for example, now is the football um, off season. It still is the off season. Here's, you know, post about what you're doing during the off season. You're going on vacation, give a little clips into your life. You know, you're going on vacation, you're going shopping. Yeah, girls like to watch you go shopping. Maybe guys like to watch what you're buying too. Going shopping, you're working out. What's your workout regimen? What do you, what do you eat? You know, little things like that are engaging things and people want to see that kind of stuff happen. Um, same as hockey players, you know, you gotta engage, engage. And um, so I'm just gonna give you a little tip. So when your organization, this goes for every sport, when your organization takes pictures of you in your suit and tie, you know, just don't put it on your Instagram as a Instagram story with like nothing there. First of all, that's boring. I don't need to see the picture of you walking in with your suit with nothing else there. Um, tag the make of the suit. So let's say you're wearing a Calvin Klein suit. You tag Calvin Klein in your post. And then you tell them, you know, thanks for dressing me or something along those lines. That's how you get sponsorships. The more times you tag businesses, especially when you are um, an athlete, the more times they're going to know that you're using their products, they're going to want you to be a sponsor for them. Which is a little tip. But, you know, they don't listen to me anyway. Because look at the stuff, look at the crap that some of them post already anyway. Um, but that's basically, you know, it. So, that's this week's edition of The Sassy Show. Pretty much sums it up. So, what did we learn today, folks? We learned that the coronavirus is nothing to be really excited about. It's been around for a while. People should have been washing their hands from the beginning. They shouldn't be starting to wash their hands. I posted a video to show you how preschoolers are taught, how we taught preschoolers how to wash their hands. It's on TikTok, it's on Twitter right now, it will be on Instagram tomorrow, and I probably will put it on Facebook later. And, okay, so don't be rude, don't be disrespectful. Um, pay your bills on time. Another one, pay your bills on time. No matter if you're paying an entrepreneur doing work for you, if you're paying a company doing work for you, you're paying anybody to do stuff for you, pay on time. Answer your emails. Whether or not you're going to use people's products or services, answer your freaking emails. Just be polite. Be courteous. Be courtesy. And you know, common courtesy rule. Um, and what else did we learn? You know, and that's pretty much what, And then we learned that Instagram is now dying down with the influencing market and it's shifting now to Twitter and that's what we learned today on the sassy show what we're gonna learn next week I don't know we'll find out we'll find out next week now won't we and I will be somewhere else because I'm on the road in 2020 bye everybody thanks for watching on Facebook it's not just radio it's Rockland World Radio rocklandworldradio.com